Look at the Braves and a save there and they score. So here's Lassen with a shot and he scores. So he drives it in, walking in, he shoots and scores. Mustangs to our first one. It's Rizzi, it's a shot and he scores. 4-4. Oh. <laughs> Lachlan going to the net, shoots and he scores. Goes to the shot away, Davis makes the save. No, it's in! It's in! Perth takes the lead! Live from O'Brien Group Arena in Melbourne, this is AIHL TV. The regular season is brought to you by Air Canada, who offer the only daily and non stop service to Vancouver. For details, visit aircanada.com.au. Omus. Omus are a direct infrastructure investor with a portfolio worth in excess of $50 billion. ATC Productions, your live event technical provider. And APA Group, delivering Australia's energy. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this AIHL clash between the Melbourne Mustangs and the Sydney Bears. It's the final game of a three-game weekend here at the O'Brien Ice House and the second game of a road trip for the Bears after they knocked off the Melbourne Ice 5-4 here last night. The Mustangs are also coming off a victory over the ice on Friday night, the last Melbourne Derby for season 2019, and are looking to take the full six points here this afternoon. It's third playing fifth on the AIHL ladder as the race to the finals becomes clearer. Hello everyone, my name's Steve White, and uh, this one promises to be a classic. Two teams in good form, third playing fifth, and uh, as always, my co-commentator, the inevitable Rod Jones. Hello, my friend. Great to be here. Great to be with the magic man of the announcing world, yeah. Mr. Stephen White. Well, I think you're just uh, still spiting after Friday night, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, discuss that later. Anyway, pivotal game for both clubs. I mean, the Bears sitting in third. Mustangs coming off the win over the ice, getting uh, now all three points behind the Thunder in fourth, who play the Sydney Ice Dogs, beat the Sydney Ice Dogs last night. Uh, how was the score there? 7-3. Uh, so how important is this game to the Mustangs? Oh, very, man. I think every game from here on in is important. So at the end of the day, they can't take this lightly. Yep. They didn't manage to sweep last weekend. And if I was them, from here on in, you're looking to sweep everything. So they'll they'll take these guys out, get another three, go to Adelaide, yep. get six, and keep on going. Yep. And a couple of omissions for the Mustangs tonight. Brad Apps suspended. Yep. Andrew Erzen is out injured. Uh, Pat O'Kane not in the lineup tonight. So... A bit of line shuffling uh, going on on Max Parent's bench. Uh, also some emissions for the Bears. I mean, uh, Joey Gonner's not down here. Uh, Schlamp still out injured as well. Yeah. So uh, they've be interesting to see how they match their lines uh, here this afternoon. Absolutely. And let's not forget Troy Robertson is still out for the Mustangs yes. too. So, so they've played Owens back on, on Friday night. And... Uh, and that seemed to work pretty well, but it, they've got a few holes in their defensive lineup, so they need to be aware of that. And if I was the Bears, I'd certainly be looking to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. So let's head down to center ice for the national anthem, and we'll be back with the start of play in just a few moments. Number 29, Brendan McDowell's 200th game for the Kodiak Melbourne Mustangs Ice Hockey Club. And our third and final order of business is to please rise and remove all headwear as the national anthem is played. So that does it there for the pre-game proceedings. And uh, yes, as we talked about, uh, we briefly mentioned on Friday night, a couple of big milestones for the Mustangs. Uh, obviously, earlier in the month, uh, 
Matt Stringer played his 200th game. He's now at 210. And uh, today, though, Brendan McDowell notches up game number 200. That's correct. And Damian Bright had 150, I think, three weeks ago. Yep. So they're all getting up in the big numbers. And, uh, and certainly from uh, from Brendan's and Matt Stringer's point of view, they, they were one of the original players. And so fantastic effort. And our starting goaltenders for this evening's game, Kevin Nastiuk, five games played, eight, five, six, five save percentage, head to head with Anthony Kimlin, 16 games, 0.894 save percentage, an absolutely uh, cracking goaltending duel should ensue here this evening. And just going back to some of the other milestones, uh, our very own Bert Malloy, well, AHL podcast Bert Malloy, Newcastle North Stars, notched up his 200th game. So uh, congratulations to Bert. And uh, a couple of her Thunder players hit milestones as well. Jordy Kuros has hit 200 games. Alistair, Pun Alistair Punler's hit 100 games. And Tommy Steven is playing his 100th game also this afternoon for the City Bears. So it's, mile it's raining milestones this weekend. So I don't know why. But what about uh, Vladimir Rubes? Rubes. What, well, you're what, how many games would he have played? You're looking at 500 there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, just want your tweets on screen this afternoon. Hashtag AHL Game Day is the handle. And I'm not sure it'll be as uh, chaotic as Friday nights. A little bit more subdued, but uh, nonetheless, fire them off at us. Your officials for this afternoon's game, Rob Love wearing the bands, and Steve DeWitt and Dan Boyd are your linesmen as we're underway here at the O'Brien Ice House between the Bears and the Mustangs. Also this afternoon, two other games being played across the AIHL as the Sydney Ice Dogs and Thunder go head to head in a double header. And uh, just like that, they score. Thomas Black, second goal for the weekend. 24 seconds into the first period. And look who set him up, okay? Thomas Parker, but off a great move by, uh, by um, Jordan Owens at the blue line. Parker picked the puck up off Owens, looked across in front of the net for Flack, and a nice deflection and bingo. So. Flack, it's a flack attack, man. Well, I, we're going to have to <laughs> coin that nickname now, Rod, you've yep. called it. So uh, Thomas Flack scored his first AIHL goal last uh, Friday night here against the ice. Now he's got his second against the Bears, 24 seconds in to the first period. And it's a 1-0 hockey game. Might have been two there with a follow-up drive from McMahon. It's still loose in the slot. And uh, the Bears will put on the back foot and uh, looking to steady the ship. Now here's Guillaume. Throws it across here to Terrell Clare, and he goes high off the glass, looking for Tommy Steven to skate onto it in his 100th game, as we mentioned before. Dowder now picks the puck up, sends it up ice, hits Brucker. He throws that one across. And this one comes straight back out to center. Here's Adam Vyas, Adam Vyasov. Dropped the V there from his name. But taken away now here by Dowder the other way. He's got two Mustangs players in front of him. Breaks to the outside of the high slot. Nice move, Dowder walking in. Dowder scores, and he scores! Instant reply from the Sydney Bears and a goal of the season contender. And just like that, 1-1. One, one. So watch the replay again. He makes a good move, and I have to wonder if the defenseman was watching the puck and not the player and didn't take him out. And that gave him enough time to get in front of Nastiak to put the puck away. So Jordan Owens should have taken him, and he didn't. And that's surprising for a guy of Owens' caliber. So he got caught a little bit um, off guard. And that gave um, Dauda the opportunity to get in and put the puck away. So quickly won all. So just like that, two goals in 90 seconds. It's 1-1. One, one. Don't adjust your screens. And while the, the pace this game's been played at, even though it's 90 seconds in, it. Uh, we get very interesting in this first period. Kimlin out of his net to feather that one around. Couldn't pick it up. At the, the half wall there could Ratcliffe, the Kiwi, puts it back now here to Owens. As we talked about, playing on the points, considering the uh, injuries to the Mustangs on the blue line. And obviously, Andrew Erds and Troy Robinson both out of the lineup. This one set across. It's picked off. Oh, here, here come this, the Bears. And well, just pulling that off and failing to pull the trigger there for the Bears was Timmy Newmark. And... Uh, very nearly 2-1, and well, that's going to be icing. Well, well, well. So fundamental hockey 101, you're on the hash marks. You want to make sure what you're doing. Humphreys made that pass, and it didn't come off the way he wanted, and it almost got picked up. 
It's Brucker's 100th, not Stephen for the Bears. Yes, thanks for that. I was just actually confirming that with uh, uh, someone else who texted me then. Sorry, my bad. So Tom, Tommy's going to have to claim it later. So Stella's <laughs> on, on the money. Yes, she is. I'm sure Matty Burrell was as well. <laughs> so this one put out now here to Galtier down the side of the net. He gains over the, set, the center line. Thomas puts it back out. And now, well, that was intended for Anderson. Here's Flack trying to poke at the puck. Woodlord shifted it across. And now here to Esposito. Thomas. Esposito now. Side of the net, just uh, not much to aim at. It just fends off Anderson with a big don't argue. We have a whistle. But the good thing about Anderson is he just got hit. He got hit pretty hard. He just got up, shook it off, and kept on going. <laughs> he dealt before I had time to trash talk Sydney Bears. They score. Well, that's the beauty of this game, you know? You think you've got them where you want them, and the next thing you know, you drop your bundle and bingo. So again, a shot, well, that uh, doesn't get through traffic. It's picked up now here by Baraka, the official 100th game man, since it's one around, though, to the Mustangs, picked up by Vyasov. And he starts out from behind his own net with one of those familiar rushes that uh, has become his trademark there for the men in orange and black. It's picked up by Isaacs, and his shot there seen all the way by Kimlin. Isaacs and skates onto it. As Dowdle went reaching for it, went past everyone. Bright uh, tried to pick that one up at center. Stephen was streaking down the far side. Good stick work there from McMahon to break up that play. And I'm away here to Boak. And on to Bright eventually. Center up ice. That's deflected. Icing's going to be cancelled out. But Kimu is out of his net to play this one. Played it a little too dangerously. Didn't get much on it. Here's Vias upside of the net. And he gets shoulder to the ice by Terrell Clare. Good check from him to cancel out. Adam Vyasov's drive to the net, and that will do it for that rush as Rucker has the puck now at center. Hands up now here to Dowder. Dowder now looking for the top of the slot. It's out of the side of the net. Stevens' wide angle shot just slides through the, the blue paint, and the Mustangs look for a line chain, as do the men from Sydney. Dowder, nice moves. McMahon had the nicer ones and picked up now here by Humphreys who had an electric game on Friday night against the Melbourne Ice, particularly that first period. He sends a wide pass now here to Stringer. Stringer now busting in, sends it back across. A shot, what a save! I think that was Annesley in the end, sliding in front of his goaltender that took the brunt of it. Looked like Kimlin would have had it covered anyway. Thomas's turnaround try was shouldered aside there by Anthony Kimlin. Flipped up ice now here to Humphreys. They collide. Humphreys now gets around two Bears players. Annesley comes to cut him off, and Funes had his man Stringer tied up there in the low slot legally. As Kimlin kicks that one out from Thomas, it's loose for Stringer. They all dive in on the puck at the slow slot, and no one can really get uh, wood to rubber, and it uh, comes back out behind the goal line now here to Mitch Humphreys. Pursued by Funes, referees in the way. McDowell, the 200-game man, slims this one in front of the slot. It's loose, players whack at it. It's clear down here to the half wall, and Owens retreats for Ratcliffe to skate onto the puck and flip this one back out to centre. Danny Gautier might have a little bit of a step there on Humphreys, but the back check there was effective, and Claire will get it here behind the goal line. 1-1, one, one, 10 minutes remaining here in the first period at the O'Brien Ice House between the Bears and the Mustangs. Here's Galtier now over the blue line. He shoots a good save by Nastiuk, and he holds on. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that both teams are going to have to control their own ends better, and if they're not careful, they're going to get burned like both ways. So you had Mustangs throw the puck away a couple times on cross-ice passes that they really shouldn't have done, and then you had the Bears lose sight of what was going on in front of their own net. And if it wasn't for Kimlin and from, for some sliding bodies, they could have easily scored another goal. Indeed, as McMahon tries to pick the puck up now, kept in by Esposito, the veterans of the Sydney Bears for many years. Picked up by Flack, looking for goal number two. Nice drag and drop, and an even nicer glove save there from Kimlin. And he holds on. So, dude, because you know everything, uh, here's another one. Colin, watch the AHL over here in America. What part of America, Colin? Well, we had what, we who, who do we have? We had Alabama, Alabama. California, yeah. Hawaii, no, we didn't have Hawaii, Florida. Yeah. Well, we've got to we not... had Britain, we had Sweden, and we had them coming from everywhere. And Anders probably hasn't woken up yet. <laughs> and I'm sure Anthony Russell is uh, up nice and early. Well, he better be. This is uh, over there in the UK. Here's Jones. Long range drive, and that's into the opposite corner. Brucker. Gates onto the puck and picked up now here by Dowder. Drops it back off now here to Bruckett. All the Mustangs players in front of them and they uh, cancelled out there as Claire gets the shoulder from McMahon and it's set up ice now here to Anderson. But uh, Guinea has the step on him and has the puck. Chips this one up 
into the neutral zone. Jones just plays it behind now here for McMahon. And the Mustangs will reset. Darling, who's seen a bit more ice time in the last couple of games due to the injuries, as we've talked about a couple of times on the Mustangs blue line. Sent in front. Dowder who has camped there in the low slot. Vyasov comes to the rescue. Clears it out now here to Isaacson with one-on-one -on -one with Annesley. Isaacson pulls up, waits for reinforcements to arrive. Here's a drive from Vyasov. It's loose with the side. Oh, we're safe! As Owens followed up and Kimlin got the shoulder on it. And Kimlin seems to have his eye in despite that early goal now. Here's Owens, slings it across. It read there by Annesley, puts it back out to the half wall. Annesley, oh, he gets said That's uh, a candidate there for maybe a check from behind. Is that one shot in front? Kimlin covers, and we get a whistle. Bears bench uh, incredulous about that decision. And we'll hold on. Well, you want to watch the replay on that because there was a bit of a shove, but I don't know if it was definitely a hit from behind. So let's have yeah. a look. That was a great setup. Isaacson saw that of Majasov coming oh, in. What a oh. save. Was that off his arm and yeah. then off the crossbar, off his arm over the net? Yeah, on, on replay, it, uh, second look at it. At full speed, it looked malicious, but I think Annesley sold that one a little bit. Uh, in the end, but uh, make your own call at home. It's flipped up now. Here's Goltier in behind the Mustangs defense. Goltier one on one shoots well wide on Edamas of Mustangs goaltender and Astiuk can very nearly two one there to the Sydney Bears. He's got such speed and great hands for a big man. Is Danny Goltier put back up now here to Fuse who takes over and flips this one into the opposite corner. There's Newmark heads into the opposite corner on the forecheck here for the Bears. Sent to the eyes. Goltier has the puck. Just uh, rushes off Michael McDowell and tried to slip that one through there, but uh, unavailable, unable to do so. And Annesley's going to have to hustle back. There is uh, Humphreys right on his tail. Uh, Annesley goes to the ice. No call from the official. All good, says the man with the orange, the red bands tonight. There's uh, a stick move there from Flax. Looked it in front. One time shot there from McDowell, and he blazed away over the crossbar. Bright held it in at the blue line. And he does it again a second time. Puts it on net. Too much traffic in front. Puck doesn't get through. Fumes tried to slim that one out of the zone. It didn't get that far. And it will maybe now. But Bright holds it in for a third time on this shift. Kicked out there by Kimlin. And into the waiting hands there of Anderson. Puts on a bit of pace. Waits for options to present themselves. One in the form of Bright. The other in the form of Jones. Tried to thread the needle. Couldn't get it through the legs. Or through Anthony Kimlin. And he'll end up with it. Well, you just want to watch that series of plays and watch Flack, man. He's unreal at the moment. Chris Makaborski, thankful for these early games. 10 p.m. start in Alberta, Canada. Well, Chris, glad to have you here. Anders, nice. my man. <laughs> game day, good morning, 6.07 a.m. in Malmo, but I won't miss a game if I'm awake. A cup of tea and AHL hockey, great start to the day. What I want to know is, are you having pickled herring on toast for breakfast? Oh, no, or no. do you have Cheerio herrings? I think both are as uh, equally poor tasting as each other. Sweet pickled herring. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Cereal form. Let's not go there. Here's Vyasov now. Up to Jamie Burke. His turnaround shot didn't dare threaten the net there of Anthony Kivlin. Bright holds the line yet again. Vyasov. Trying to shake a couple of Bears players. One of them fuse. One of them doubt it. And back now here to McMahon. Sent now here to Christian Isaacson. But a pretty quiet game on Friday night by his usual standards. Sent around the kick plate now and out to Brucker. Tried to get it through to Dowder, chopped off by Isaacson. But Dowder will gather this one back in and start the breakout now here through the neutral zone for the Bears with a head of steam. Four on two as that shot to trickle through to Nastyuk, but uh, not much venom on it. And sent out back now here for the Mustangs for Owens to skate on to the far side with Stringer and Isaacson. Turn here to Isaacson. The trailer is Stringer. Oh, he scores! Yeah, right on. Stringer makes it two to one. And the Mustangs jump out to a one goal lead. Well, that was interesting too, because I think people were looking for the flip pass from Owens to Isaacson, but it went right past Isaacson to Stringer, and Stringer was smart enough to go upstairs on Kimlin, and it's two one. So Matty Stringer, that was a beauty setup. Not sure if he, had, no, he, I think Isaacson was trying to take it into yeah, his skates. He but was. It was but, but whether Owens was going to Isaacson, it looked like he was going to Stringer, yeah. okay? So he'll, he'll claim it was accidentally on purpose, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it's uh, the puck is where it needs to be in the back of the net, and the score is where it needs to be in terms of the Mustangs. They have we'll a one-goal lead. We'll just string him along for a while. What do you reckon? Sorry? We'll just string him along for a while. No, no. 
It's not even the third period yet <laughs> for the bad punts. Here's Newmark now. Out to Funes. Down the near side. Funes rides the check there of Parker Thomas. Funes still has it. Sends it behind the net now here to Galtier. The Bears looking for a response. They got one within 45 seconds prior. Ratcliffe. It's been quite the addition here for the City Bears this year. Funes. And flipped up out of the ice for Annesley to take here at the neutral zone and start a break in. Now here, oh, nice hands from Gauthier, he shoots oh, and scores! Oh, oh, oh. Deja vu, an instant oh. reply from the Bears, and that was a thing of beauty from Danny Gauthier. So you said in the last one, that was the goal of the season. Oh. Watch that, mate. What a little move, one-handed, pulls the puck around, does a pivot, and then takes a good shot, bingo. Uh, I hope Even right. you and I couldn't do that. No, huh? of course not. I mean, I could do it probably one hand. No, just, <laughs> look at that. Boom. Thanks very much. Yeah. And the shot to boot. Yeah. And, uh, well, four goals in the space of 10 minutes here at the O'Brien Ice House. Danny Gauthier's 17th goal, team leading 17th goal for the Bears. And that ties it up here at 2 2. And we're in for a shootout early. Let's and one wonders if we can continue this pace for the remaining two periods. Logic would say no, but uh, the heart would say yes. Here's Anderson, drops it off. Here's Burke, side of the net, walking in, Kim, and he scores! It's Flack! Flack's got two! And he's third on the weekend, and just like that, it's 3-2. Well, what can you say? It was a great little setup. Anderson could have taken the shot, but he saw Flack to his right, and Flack had an opening, so he gave him the puck. Flack beat the defense and put the puck in. This is nuts. Right, there you go. The defenseman went for Anderson and left Flack open, and Anderson was smart enough to give the puck up. I give Anderson 9.5 out of 10 on that, mate, for sure. Flack's third of the year, his second tonight, third of the season. Or flirt of his career, I should say. This is completely nuts here. We've got five goals now in the opening period. He might have a fourth. Here's Gaultier. What can he do? To the outside. Oh, Gaultier. Nice hit. There you go. What a hit there from Thomas. He wasn't going to let him stand him up a second time. And Ratcliffe has it. Great check there from Parker Thomas. Shoulder on chest. Isaacson back the other way now. Here's Burke. Drags. This one loses the handle. And shot back out to the neutral zone. Well, I said at the start of the broadcast we were in for a goaltending duel. And then, uh, well, I'll claim the goaltending jinx on that one and I'm sure I'll have a couple of them waiting for me in the car park after the game this one set back now here to Isaacson as the Bears try to break out here through Dowder he's got three Mustangs players to beat uh, can't beat the skate of Bright but uh, penalty coming up hooking the call Jamie Burke's gonna get it and a power play coming up now here for the Bears first penalty of the game and they'll have the man advantage so let's just talk about Gauthier there. Gauthier's got all the moves and everything else, and Parker Thomas played him exactly how he should have. He didn't give him the open space, cut him off, and took the body on him. Yeah. That's what you have to do, and if you don't do that with a guy like him, you're going to wish you were never born, okay? Let's have a look. Let's see with the... Yeah, like it was subtle, but it was there on the upper arm. So, call there, resulting in the hook. Annesley now, quarterback this Bears power play as he has done for the past few seasons. It's always in front! And just like that, Dowder. they score Dowder, and it's 3-3. Three, three. Well, so, unfortunately, there are penalties and then there are penalties. So you just have to desperately make sure that with guys like this, they've got Gauche and Dauda and that and other people, you do not want to be in the box and give them the opportunity. And you can see that would take that six seconds or something. Yeah. Oh, what a trend we've got going here. I think I'd have to have a look at it in the intermission, but I think it's been about an average a minute, minute 30 between goals in terms of one team scoring and the other team replying. And obviously the Mustangs have scored four so the first and the Bears have replied every time. Oh, well, uh, there's the OK Corral out here at the O'Brien House House. Is this one sent back over the line to Sean Jones? Can't feather this through. Anderson. Dowder puts him into the glass. Annesley tried to chip this one out. Comes out now here to Brendan. Sorry, to Matt Anderson. It was Brendan McDowell for a second there. Anderson trying to stick handle in the phone booth. Funes 
comes in and finishes the job and Dowder will skate onto it and start the breakout now here for the Mustangs. Around Anderson and around Jones and sends the puck out now here to Brucker. Tried to thread the needle there through to Tommy Stephen who was going hard to the net through the high slot and it's sent back the other way. Here to Jones, gets stood up and separated from the puck for Newmark to skate onto. Newmark now cuts across the neutral zone with Ratcliffe and Galtier to his right. Galtier now is going to skate in. McMahon, a man similar to stature, is going to get to the puck first. Jones just wedges that one out of the zone and Vyasov will play this one. Vyasov pulls up. Well, at least I thought he was going to. Then he went the other way. Here's Newmark. Curls up with the uh, pursuit of Vyasov right in his crosshairs and he drops this one off. And we will be all the way back now here for Gillian Gillian to start the breakout now here for the Bears. Galchik, man, he has got some slick hands. Down the far side. Backhands this one into the zone and chases his own dump in. Gets to it first there before Damien Bright. Sent it in front of the net. It was deflected, but back to the point. Gillian's shot is blocked up high. And the Mustangs avert that scoring chance as far as the Bears are concerned. Isaacson, 152 to go here in period number one. Yes, it is 3-3 if you're just tuning in. Gautier now. Steven peels for a hold on the Sydney Bears bench. Nothing forthcoming. Play continues. Held in at the line by Isaacson. Slips it through. Now here's Burke. Pulls up. Shoots. Good save from Kimlin covering the five hole with the paddle. He's watched the paddle out and Tyrell Clare skates onto a loose puck with 90 seconds remaining here in period number one. Just dumps this one in. The Bears will get a change of personnel as Nasiuk is forced to play this one high off the glass. Tried to hold it in there did Michael Haynes. Esposito now battling with Humphreys at the far side. Here's Claire. Picks up a loose puck. Tried to get it through to Haynes who only had Thomas to beat over the blue line and it's flipped back in now for Annesley to coordinate a counter attack now here for the Sydney Bears. Esposito takes his spot on the other half full but uh, Wardlaw is going to have to skate onto it now for the Bears. Owens beats him to it and sets it up and sends it off the kick plate. Nice touch pass there from McDowell. He's going to be offside as Esposito Pumped him and uh, penalty Esposito. Jazz squares McGee. A handful of friends and I are all watching from Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Arizona. Why watch movies with your long distance friends when you can watch the AHL and listen to the dulcet tones of my friend and I? Tim Stringer, AHL game. Nice goal from Stringer for his mom and his sister's birthday. Well, Timmy, I couldn't agree more. That was a great goal. He did the right thing with the puck when he had it, and he beat Kimlin upstairs. That's going to be his excuse for not buying a present. But uh, I think that's uh, more than enough, though. No, <laughs> Mum will disagree. Here's Burke now. Over the blue line. Thomas just holds it in. Burke with a drive, and Kimlin saw that one. As Gautier now has the puck. Going to go shorthanded here. Two on two of the Bears. Sent across to Ratcliffe, and his shot there was kicked out. Ratcliffe still has it. Ratcliffe walking in. He shoots. Oh, oh great move whoa. there with a turnaround. And a great save from Nastio. So you can't do that. You're on the power play. You must get the puck, get control, and get back in the offensive end. Who's got him? Four guys, and he makes a pirouette and almost scores. And thank goodness for Nastio. I was going to say that prior tweet. Uh, Virginia, one of the most beautiful states I've ever been to. Hold on. Is Anders is responding. Anders, HL, making fun of my pickled herring again. Laugh out loud. Just made a sandwich. Oh, oh. Anders, we would never, never, never make fun of it. You should have never Steven, have sent it. Steven wants a bit of it. No, he's okay. already sent it to me. <laughs> I don't want any more. <laughs> one, bite, one bite was enough. Uh, cloth, on the other hand, <laughs> his feuds. He has scalded in one hit. Is uh, 23 seconds left. As the penalty to Esposito brings up this Mustangs power play, they'll have uh, 124 of it remaining, but only 15 seconds of this period to try and generate something. Here's Owens now. Just pulls up, slips it through there to Vyasov, but a timely stick there from Dowder, which couldn't clear the zone. Owens back now here to Burke with Thomas calling for it. Burke with a shot through traffic. Easy save there for Kimmer. And that will do it. A frantic first period, six goals. The Bears three, the Mustangs three, Rod. That was one of the best periods I've seen so far this year. Well, certainly it was from an offensive perspective. Yeah. But you remember we talked about right at the start of the game, and I said, you got to win this thing in your own end, OK? Can't yeah. make mistakes. There were numerous times where people played the wrong guy. Somebody got in behind them. They weren't giving the goaltender enough support. You're making cross-ice passes in the danger zone. So, dude, and you got to stay out of the box, too. Three all. Yep. If you're uh, into the offense and want to see a goal scored, you couldn't have beat it, could you? Kevin Morrison, AHL game day, and you thought Friday's game was crazy. Six goals in under 10 minutes, crazy. Indeed, it's crazy being the word. And now we've said that there's going to be no goals for the rest of the game. We're going to go to overtime. 
Link, apparently both teams' defense is being saved for the second period. Well, I'm sure that both coaches will be saying, great, my offense is working, but now i got to make my sure my defense stays focused. Well, you would hope so, as uh, folks don't go anywhere. That uh, first period was very entertaining. It's the Mustangs three, the Bears three. We'll be back with the second period right after this.
And welcome back to the O'Brien Ice House after a frantic first period. It is the Mustangs three, the Sydney Bears three. Uh, defense was kind of optional as we have a look at some of the tweets coming in. Hotto, what a roller coaster of a first period. Well, Hotto, there's no doubt that that was uh, certainly a roller coaster. Bing bang bong. Kevin Mitchell, HL game day. As a Sydney Bears fan, I'm wishing I was there to support because they are a great crew. Hell of a first period. Well, if you're, like I said, if you get to the offense, it was a great period. But if, yeah, if you're uh, Ron Kaprowski or Max Parent, it was. Uh, tear your hair out on what's yeah, left of it sure. <laughs> first period but uh, we're underway here for the second as Annesley has the puck now swings it into the opposite corner get the Mustangs still have a short power play here 49 seconds to be exact on the penalty to Esposito for interference here's Owens pulls up at the half wall drops it back to the point and he exchanges the puck here with Thomas and he drops it off down low now here for Isaacson here's Burke Trying to isolate a shooting leg. Burke with a one-timer, and Annesley got that in the instep. And uh, made sure off there by Ratcliffe over the blue line. Thomas tries to get it right back in. Does through the bias off, but Annesley fires at the rest of the ice. And the Bears will take the opportunity to change up their penalty-killing personnel, at least one of them. So Vyasov now. But, uh, we should point out that there's been a goaltending change between periods. Jaden Pine Murphy is now in net for the Mustangs. So interesting move there from Max Parent. Obviously not happy with the, or trying to change things up at least in terms of the Mustangs goaltending stocks. Unless there's an injury to Nastyuk we don't know about. Here's Vyasov now. Oh, tried to roof it there on a downed Kimlin. And that's the end of the penalty. We're back to five on five as Esposito is straight back on the ice. Dada now trying to dangle his way through. Nice moves from him. He's lost control of the puck for a brief second. Fights off McMahon, Owens. Just uh, swaps the puck away from him. And McMahon now chips this one up ice. And that was just out of the reach there of Adam as icing is cancelled out. And Killian Guionet will send the puck up now here to Dowder. Looking now here for McMahon. And he starts with a full burst of steam through centre ice. Three on two back the other way. Newmark prods there at Burke. It trickles through the slot. And Ratcliffe now shoots this one out. On the way to Newmark, he just uh, elects to shift this one into the zone. And McMahon and Bright will combine now here on the back end. That pass is well read there by Guionet. Just gets in over the blue line. Just a little too hasty, though, was Ratcliffe. He's offside. Well, two things. Uh, you got to watch the long stretch pass, and that's the sort of danger that you get in. You're looking for the guy. You can see him, but you're not reading the play properly, and someone's going to pick that up and bingo. William, around 12.24 a.m. in Brampton, Ontario, Canada, I'm watching Australian hockey. Who would have thought, well, William, I'd like to hear what you have to think at the end of the game because people who watch this and don't know are pretty surprised by the quality. Here's Steven now, picks that one off, tried to get a shot off, and then tried to slot it through there to Brucker, and they just couldn't meet up there. It's a big hit, well, attempted big hit there as Gautier had his man lined up from uh, halfway across the ice and almost ended up in his own bench. Owens. I was going to say, Brad DeMontario, is, is he a battalion fan? He's Stephen, or a former battalion fan, I don't know. Brampton. So he's just Galtier. His wide angle shot is not all the way through. Now Stephen. And all the way back to Fuse. He's got a bit of real estate to play with, but uh, just couldn't uh, get a clean pass there through to Brucker as Stephen is with him on this uh, top line. Ron Kaprowski switching things up. That was tipped on the way through, but off the side of the net there is Pine Murphy flashed the glove out. And it went wide nonetheless. 11.55 to go. No change to the scoreline at the end of the first intermission where it was 3-3. Annesley, Stringer heads him off at the pass. Owens just applies the check. As, oh, nice intelligent play there from Gautier. Flipped it over the net, hoping to get Brucker, but uh, pretty difficult to ask to control that one down and put a shot on. Jaden Pine Murphy's net, but uh, play continues. Here's Mustangs through Humphreys with McDowell. Humphreys gets round one, won't get around Feuds or Willie. Into the corner, sends it back, looking for Isaacson. Oh, and the referee Rob Love has been collected. And did he get one in the? Did he get a skate in the face? Oh dearie me. Did he get a skate or did he get collected in the hit? No, we'd like to see that again just to see exactly what happens. So 
So hopefully Rob Love is okay to continue, or we might be looking at uh, Steve DeWitt and Dan Boyd going two-man for the rest of the game. I didn't bring my ref's gear. I should just park it somewhere, even though Here we go. Ken Here we go. probably wouldn't be happy with that. Here's Humphreys. He tried to get out. Oh, that, man. That, that's he what just, happened. He tried to skip the hit, and he got turned over and dropped on his head. Cool. That's uh, it was almost like an unintentional hip check, you know, when you yeah. go over the top. But, That's correct. Uh, well, it's very unfortunate, and it's one of those sort of things where if you land the wrong way. Yeah. 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 Well, particularly, uh, let's have a look from the, the wide angle. Here's Humphreys. So you see he jumps, and he gets caught and pinned, and he falls, oh. but he probably fell on his head. Well, back of his head, way. back of his head, I think. Yeah. The helmet's gone onto the ice. So that hurts helmet or, or hurts even more without it. Remember in the old 70s days when the uh, Kerry, or well, 80s, 90s really with Kerry Fraser and his, uh, sure. his flowing locks. Never looked out of place no matter how many times he, uh, yeah. when he got When you think hit. about how this game used to be played, how about being a goaltender? Oh, yeah, Jack Plant. With no, Jack Plant, with yeah. no helmet and yeah. no face mask. So it looks to be okay. Referee Rob Love back to his feet. Good to see. Hockey referees are the toughest, uh, not going to, uh, maybe MMA referees, but hockey referees have more to contend with, I think, in terms of uh, friendly fire and unfriendly fire. Well, certainly we've seen a couple of, of instances here. The famous one where our little friend got pasted yeah. at the blue line. Yes. That made the National 9 news, and I mean, he certainly paid the price for that. He was in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah, I, I got 15 minutes out of that, tried to make it 16. <laughs> no, that's, that was six years ago. Yeah. So... Anyway, it's a grandkid story now. But uh, 11.20 to go here in the second period. And that's just held off the draw there by Kimlet. So let's have a little chat about the goaltending change. What do yep. you reckon? Is that a shake-up? Or is it a, is it a sign to Nastyuk that he wasn't playing well enough? Or was it just a, a change of pace? Or did Nastyuk get hurt in a play? He's not out on the bench. So, so he's maybe still... he's hurt? Yeah, he might be hurt. It did, uh, I did see him sort of get up gingerly after he made that save on Ratcliffe on that yeah. power play. So maybe that's, uh, well, Relater. But uh, this one now here to Brucker. Burke takes the puck away from him, gets a shot, and that's saved by Kimlin, and he holds on. Well, you know, a couple of things that I was going to say in the previous period. So one Parker taking Goche properly. That was great. Vadim, okay, so Vadim's playing well, but you know, I don't know if you notice, he came down on their defense, and he makes one move too many. Use the defense for the screen, take the shot, and drive the net. Yeah. You can't say that enough, mate. If you hold the puck too long, you lose your options, and you don't want to do that. He's got a great shot, he needs to shoot more. Indeed he does. As uh, Steven now, to the outside, around Bright, rides the check well, he's got Dowder calling for it to the opposite end. Tried to feed it through to him, and Dowder, well, he got most of it. But uh, Anderson prevented that one. Good shot there from Brucker and a better save from Pine Murphy. It's probably his first meaningful test of the period. Side of the net, he's thumbed up trumps again as he denies Tommy Stevens. But the thing was, he didn't know. He didn't know that, that Stevens was coming out from that side. He saw him at the last second. He was looking for the puck to come the other way. Watch this. See? That? Hey, yep. That was very, very fortunate that he covered the short side at the last second. Yep, absolutely. Here's Claire now. Just uh, managed to get to the puck first. Thomas is going to get to it now for the Mustangs, and he whips this one around. Stringer, chip and chase, but Claire's the only man back for the Bears, and he just turns this straight over now here to Parker Thomas, and the Mustangs will start their breakout now through the neutral zone as Darling gains the center line and shoots it in now. Kimlin, high off the glass. Not sure if uh, Rob's going to be having uh, flashbacks every time he goes into that corner now, but uh, that will be icing. Well, that's what happens when you leap like a gazelle and it doesn't come off. Yeah, decent vertical jump Absolutely. for a little bloke. Yeah. Little, little bloke, I should say. <laughs> sorry, Rob. He's going to sort of watch, thing he's gonna TV, watch though, me though, back huh? and he's going to be fucking. Sorry, he's going to be texting me. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm. Looks like the, looks like the uh, broadcasting commission are going to be calling me tomorrow. <laughs> so, so Claire, I apologise for that uh, language, viewers. That's usually when I'm on the other side of the bench. But anyway, play continues. Vyasov 
have a pretty good record. I think I've only done it once in 10 years or nine, 10 years. So here's Claire. It's always the one time that people remember. Anyway, Thomas skates back for the puck, gets it back from Pine Murphy. Chipped out there from Ratcliffe. Oh no, that the techs have started. <laughs> His darling, Burke. He takes the puck down, just shoulder there by Newmark. Newmark scores the turnover. Here's Ratcliffe. His shot, great shoulder save there from Pine Murphy. Sent in front, but Danik Gautier just couldn't gather it in cleanly. And now Kai Christian Isaacson starts through the neutral zone. Here's Thomas now over the blue line. Thomas tried to chip that one through the slots, and uh, the Bears are going to break out now here through Newmark, but Biasov arrives first and settles things down now here for the Mustangs. It's the voice of Ron Koprowski directing the traffic here for the Bears. Possible two-on-one. Here's Isaacson with Biasov. He shoots straight into the chest there of Kimlin as Vyasov was an option there at the back post and didn't utilize him. Jones now. Picked up by Newmark, it's high off the glass. Gautier helps it the rest of the way. McMahon will arrive first and put this one back up now here to Gautier. There's Annesley, well he's uh, pretty well harangued there by Sean Jones, good job there from the Mustangs veteran, Dunes. And he finds Newmark, uh, Wardlaw, excuse me, shoots that right into the uh, a run of a chops there of Michael McMahon. Play continues. Here's Isaacson. Sends it through. Nice move there as Jones was in behind the Bears' defense, that being Annesley. And uh, very nearly 4 3 for the Mustangs. As the Mustangs now pile on the pressure now in the offensive zone. Anderson right back to Flack. Done well to keep that play alive despite the close attention from Newmark. Sent it across the slot. Picked up now here by Ratcliffe and sent out of the zone and Bright. Or hustle back now with McMahon and try to break back in. But an errant pass has opened the door now here for the Bears. Here's a shot, and that one was kicked out. A rebound follow up by Wardlaw, and he's put that one wide as well. That was Moncrief on the initial try. He sets up shop there in the low slot trying to get a tip, and he can't force it out. Back now here to Flack. Chips this one up ice, hoping to have his teammate Anderson skate onto it. He's done well as Anderson, but to beat out Funes, drops this one back, hoping for a return feed, and Kimlin shuts the door on that one. Doubter. Is this game starting to open up? Well, it already opened up the first 34 seconds. But uh, in terms of the second period, it was a little bit of a lull there in the first five minutes and a bit more end-to-end -end now here in the first 10. Here's Anderson. To Claire. He was hit on his stringer now. Looking there for Humphreys. As he tries to get through a sea of Sydney Bears players before being shoved to the ice. Stringer side of the net and just... Couldn't slip that one through. Owens had the follow-up try, and he just couldn't pull the trigger. Back now here to Steven with close attention from Stringer. Wide-angle shot. That's into the glass. And over the head there of Jaden Pine Murphy. That was Brucker on that try. Brucker now has the puck. Just pulls up. Sends it across ice intelligently there to Annesley. His try. He goes wide. A brave block there from Stringer, but it went over him. Claire. And uh, he turns the puck over, and this is going to open some time and space now here for Humphreys to skate down the near side. Humphreys cuts across to the high slot, drops it off now. McDowell, the try, good save from Kimlin. Dowder cleans up, but almost deflected off of Biasov. Past Kimlin, he holds on. That was a good play by Humphreys to know that uh, McDowell was with him and a little drop pass and a good shot. But um, I might speak out of turn here, but I think that the actual Mustangs are, are they're not playing as tentatively as they were in the first period. Michael Klo, HL game day, six goals in the first period. I missed five of them as my wife kept calling me to do errands in the garden. No time to do gardening when the ice hockey game's on, mate. Yeah, that, uh, that leash pretty short there, Cloffy. is uh, moved up back now here to Gautier. And uh, down there to Brian Funes. I don't know, mine's probably comparable length. Here's Gautier. Back now looking there for the follow-up trailer there in Ratcliffe, but sent out now to Burke. Burke now trying to get around. Funes has the trailer in Isaacson and Vyasov. Isaacson's going to have to pick up a loose puck. Sent right back now to the points. Long range try by Darling is held pretty easily by Kimlin. So you touched on Isaacson a little bit in the first period. He's um, He's got the skill set, but he just, I don't know, he's struggling a bit, I think. Simon Marshall, AHL game day after frantic opening periods. Great to watch the struggle in the second. Third period is going to be great. Well, at the moment it's three all, so if we're going to the third period, three all it's been a whole different game hasn't it absolutely as gear eight sends this one around the kick plate as the bears now deep in their own defensive zone ratcliffe 
a little bit haphazard on the breakout here in the Bears, but they get out finally here through Gautier. Fake to the shot long range, allowing Newmark and Ratcliffe to get in deep. Ratcliffe slide of the net, and it was blocked before it got through to Jaden Pine Murphy. And penalty coming up. Or was it just played with the, just played with the high stick? Yeah, yeah, I thought he was signaling for a... I didn't see anyone hold their face. So I think that there's been a momentum shift because it looks to me like the Bears are, are, are I mean, despite what we just saw there, the Bears yeah. seem to be a little bit more offensive-minded. Yeah. They've given Pine Murphy something to think about. They've trapped the Mustangs in their own end a bit, too. Yeah. 5.26 remaining here in the second. No goals this period so far. Six in the first being the story of the game. Here's Claire. He gets cleaned up as he shoots back to the point now, and Guillenay made a little bit of a meal of it, but he's done well to get it back in, and the Bears can force their way back over the blue line. Dowder with a little touch dump in there. Thomas gets to it first, and the Mustangs survey the scene up ice and try to get through traffic. Here's Thomas on the clear side, on the far side, over the blue line. Thomas now thinks it goes himself and deflected and into the netting and uh, face off after this that's one good thing about parker thomas he's not afraid to go in and have a go he reads the play well he goes in and he takes a good shot yeah. <laughs> that's a rerun yeah. Zelensky. Uh, that's okay <laughs> enders as a nice fan it breaks my heart to see jpm in a mustangs jersey and has pato came retired again well anders i can't answer the second question but i'm kind of happy to see jp in um in a mustangs jumper and i'm actually kind of happy to see him having a go out here today at the moment. Yeah. As Annesley now just pulls up, sent across, it's Ratcliffe, he shoots and scores! Oh. Bar down from Jake Ratcliffe, and he's made it 4 3 for the Bears. Well, that was certainly not what we wanted for Mr. Pine Murphy, but where was the guy picking the shooter up? And that one was upstairs, right, right over his shoulder. So if you watch the play again, you'll see it unfold. And remember, discipline in your own end is very, very important. Radcliffe's open, and thank you very much. Well, the, uh, actually the post, yeah. then the, off the crossbar, so the internal one anyway. So this one making it 4-3, to three. Radcliffe's 10th goal of the season. Second in points, right behind only Danny Gautier and the Bears. The visitors have a 4-3 lead with 4.30 to go. And uh, will there be an instant reply this time for the Mustangs as the trend was in the first period, albeit it was the Bears doing all the responding. Here's Kimlin. Oh, well, he made a mill of that clearance and very nearly capitalised on there by the Mustangs. Bright puts it on net. Trouted traffic there in the low slot. Sent out back to the neutral zone and Owens will glove it down and retreat and send this one higher than it went further as Funes has the puck and dumps it into an vacant third of the ice as Owens will get back to it as icing cancelled out. Just under four minutes remaining here in period number two. Owens bursts through the neutral zone, through to the high slot. Said that touched that through to Burke, he just couldn't get his stick down. It was being lifted there cleverly by Annesley. Here's Owens now, got the puck back. Tried to flip that one through on the backhand, couldn't do so. Gautier has it, sends it off now, hit a doubter, but that's just out of range in terms of that pass. Tried to get it back in front of the net, but out of the reach of even Gaultier. And Steven applies the forecheck now here for the Mustangs. And they quieten things down now here on the back end. As they take advantage there of a mishandle there by Claire. Isaacson sends it across, had Vyasov steaming in, but it's swooped onto now by Dowder with Steven going hard to the net. Dowder stood up there by Thomas, good work from him. Dowder gets the puck back though. Claire calling for it on the point. Dowder now trying to shake the check here at Thomas. Doesn't do so. Claire gathers it in and puts it on net. Bouncing shot seen well there by Pine Murphy, and he puts it into the opposite corner. Here's McMahon now, the captain, over the blue line. Around three Bears players dropped off there. Burke had the right idea. Tried to get it through here to Vyasov. Isaacson takes control. And now to Vyasov. Burke oh. retreating as he was lo looking to fire. And McMahon just forced to put this in to the half wall. Vyasov around uh, Claire, but he collided with his own teammate there and Jamie Burke, and this allowed Tyrell Claire to seize an opportunity to put it up now here to, to Newmark. His shot using the defenseman as a screen, intelligent play, but a good save there from Pine Murphy. So I'm going to put a plug in for Jeremy Brucker, because if you're watching that play, just hang on here, Jeff Coop, it's no coincidence that Sunday Pine Murphy jumps in net and the goals dry up, Kimlin having to up his game to match. Well, 
you know, it's a funny thing I was going to say. When was the last time you could think that Kimlin let three goals in in one period? Nah, very, 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 very rare. Very rare, isn't yeah. it? And that shot through traffic, and they score! Well, Jeff Coop, going to blame you for that one. 2.28, and the Bears 5-3. to three. And just like that, Jaden Pine Murphy beaten again. 5-3 to three is the score. Two-goal lead to the Bears, and no response so far for the Mustangs. That was Wardlaw getting the goal. And uh, four goal of the season for Alex Wardlaw. It's the fifth here tonight for the Bears. Let's have a look at this again. Just caught the post, eh? Yeah. On the inside of the post. Here's Owens now. Thomas. Sent up by to Jones. Jones shot and it's calmly gloved by Kimlin. So what I was going to say about Brucker in the previous play back in the Bears end, um, I think Batham was open. William, no, what's amazing? Ice Dogs forward Tim Crowder's 47 points in 15 games. Will he become the Australian Wayne Gretzky? Well, well considering he's from Van, uh, he's from BC, I, uh, I don't think so. But uh, we don't have the Ice Dogs until the last uh, second last week of the season, I think. 18th, that's right. It's our last yeah, home game. That's correct. But uh, I mean, the talk over in WA and around the league, obviously, last night as that shot goes wide was uh, Andrew Petrie been kicked out of the game yes i read a bit so i was trying to follow that because i saw a text of his here's uh gautier now this one back now here to owens owens picked up but uh, i think fridge's best effort ever ask him about the story in 1985 the brown trophy uh, involving the Qantas lounge and the afp here's anderson now as that one sent down there by Funes, took Anderson hard into the boards. Nothing much in that. Andersley backhands this one. It's going to take some beating, I think, uh, in terms of Australian hockey folklore there. <laughs> Fridge, here's Vyasov now. And that's offside, oh, and we'll whoa. have a whistle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Okay, so I just got to put this plug in for Brucker again, because Brucker actually was smart enough to see Vadim coast into the slot yep. and pick up Vadim instead of watching what was going on with the puck, and you can't, you can't emphasize that enough. That's where you win the win the game, is in your own end, okay? Yep, absolutely. As this one sent out to Dowder. McMahon rifles this one out of the zone, took an awkward deflection there off the uh, dasher. Claire read it well, and Brucker, the man we were just mentioning, make sure of it in terms of a dump in. And 103 remaining here. The Mustangs need a late goal now here to go into the third period with some confidence. Isaacson around the outside, looking for Burke. Now Burke tried to get the rebound there. Kimlin made the initial save. Burke's going to get a, a penalty, draw a penalty off of Stephen as Jaden Pine Murphy heads to the bench. Here's Stephen now. Oh, Isaacson, excuse me, wrong, right number, wrong jersey. Here's Isaacson looking for a shooting lane. Six skaters on now here for the Mustangs. For Yasov, that's touched. And we'll have a whistle and a penalty going to Tommy Stevenson, hooking the call. And the Mustangs will have a late power play. Well, and they need it. Mate. They need to actually do exactly what the Bears did. Take six seconds, pop the puck, and go, yo, we're still very much in this. And, and we're, we mean business. They need something here to get their spirits back up and get them back into this. They can make go into the uh, the break 5-4. It will be a very, very interesting third period. Not saying that 5-3 won't make it interesting, but Anderson now. Good options now. McMahon on the point with McDowell. Here's Flack. Already got two tonight. Gautier now. Just roofs this one in for Ratcliffe to skate onto. Is 133 on the power play. 10 seconds left. Maybe time for one last scoring opportunity here for the Mustangs. Jones has got it. Got McDowell with him. Jones shoots. Good save. Oh, and that's a nice score. One second flag, remaining. Flack, did Flack get it? Because it looked like it dropped in the crease and Flack was standing there. And I believe Thomas Flack Don't quote has me another on that one. Yet, dude. Well, they're... Brian Fudes is uh, protesting that it was kicked in. I mean, the new, the new rule says you can't direct it in any way. Let's have a look. Nah, it looks like it was his stick. Yeah. It's off his stick. So, Thomas Flack, what a weekend that kid's having. 
Oh, the flak attacks bigger than a better than a Big Mac. <laughs> huh? oh. <laughs> I'll give it to you. It's one second inside the, the second intermission there. And that will do it in terms of the end of the second period. It is five to four. The Sydney Bears with a one goal lead. Well, you know, there you go. 37 seconds left. They get a penalty. And you know what? Anything can happen. And that's exactly what the Mustangs wanted. They wanted to get the jump, score the goal. And, you know, from a psychological perspective, you got to go in the dressing room going, hey, man, yep. we're in this thing big yep. time, right? Yep, absolutely. Well, sets the stage. One goal difference at the second intermission. Don't go anywhere. This game's got it all so far. It's to the Sydney Bears 5, the Mustangs 4. We'll be back with the third period of action right after this.
And welcome back to the O'Brien Ice House here between the Sydney Bears and the Melbourne Mustangs. It is a 5-4 hockey game. It was 3-3 at the second intermission. And we had a three-goal second period. The Mustangs getting one with one second to go. Jeff Coop, Kimlin concedes eight goals in five periods in Melbourne. Rare areas for him. Well, we talked about that, and I said to my associate here, when was the last time someone scored three goals on him in one period? Uh, you're putting me on the spot there. Going to yeah. have to go through the stat. I, I mean, uh, for that, for what we saw in that first period, particularly the 24 seconds, that's, that's very uncharacteristic. But we are here in the third. That was history. And it's 1951 of it remaining. And a one-goal margin here in favour of the Sydney Bears. Thomas Flack, well, as there's, Galtier there's lays the boom there on uh, Thomas there in the glass. And the puck shot right back out now here to Thomas. The story of this game is Rod Johns has coined the Flack attack. Thomas Flack with the hat trick. And uh, four goals on the weekend from him. Got his first goal of the season. First AIHL goal on the Friday night against the Ice. He's got three here tonight. As that follow up drive is blocked, and oh, Annesley took that one, I think, in the instep, and he hobbles off to the bench. And play continues. It's going to be a big loss if he can't come back out. And rule number one of that is don't take your skate off because your, uh, your foot won't be able to fit back into it. It's put back to the point now. Clear with a drive, and that one was just turned aside. Brocker now. Back to Bright. And then it comes back out now here to Terrell Clare. Sent across. Excuse me, to fire Guillenay to Clare. And now back to Guillenay. That's uh, going to be a penalty. Hooking's the call. Brocker's getting it. He's thinking, why me? What did I hook? Okay. Jeremy Brocker going to the penalty box. Mr. Burke saying something. Yeah. Directly saying good call? Or... <laughs> well, well, it was a few too many words for good call, I'd say. But, uh, Jeremy Brocker in game 100 sits in the penalty box. A one goal game, a power play here to the Mustangs. They had a power play just prior to the second intermission. They're going to have a power play on the other side of it now. Thomas manning the points here with Jamie Burke. Owens sets up shot in the high slot as Isaacson sets up down on the goal line with Vadim at the top of the circle. Here's Burke now. Intended there for Thomas, just a little bit in front of, in front of him, I should say. Ratcliffe went looking for it. 1.41 remaining on the man advantage. 18.24 to go here in period number three. Back now here to Thomas. Just keeps it onside. His drive is I think that came off Isaacson as Gaultier now tried to force that one aside. He's going to get to it now and he's going to flick it out here for Thomas to gather the back in. And the Mustangs will have to break back in over the blue line. They do so there. Owens who puts it back now here to Vyasov. Owens duels there with Guillaume. That now here to Burke. Pulls up. Back side of the net now here to Isaacson. Back to Burke. Thomas calling for it at the point. Burke's done pretty well. He has Gaultier. He is wiped out on that hit. Gaultier is going to earn himself a stay in the penalty box. And it's going to be 2-10 and ten at least, I would think. And uh, another penalty. He felt that one, that's for sure. Let's have a look at it because really in the, in the scheme of things, that's not what you want. You don't want your best player. You don't want your best player to end up in the box on a 2 and 10. There's, there's a slight hook there from Brucker. That was the first penalty that was called. Let's have a look at the second one. So Gautier, there's Burke. Well, and there's the hit. So is he called a 2 and 10? Yeah, it'll be two and, well, it'll be 2 and 10 for boarding or 2 and 10 check from behind. Yeah. So either or. They're going to be without uh, their yeah. best player, offensive quarters. player, for, yeah, 12 minutes at least. So, you know, again, you just can't say enough about these things. They're on, they're, they're winning 5-4. They're trying to kill a penalty, and they lose their best player for 12 minutes. Yeah. Well, oh, it's just given two minutes for a late hit. Okay, so it isn't a 2-10. That's interesting. So, sent across now. Here to Thomas Owens. I thought the call would have been uh, boarding or boarding or uh, check from behind. But anyway, play play continues. Back now here to Thomas. Sent across Owens. Thomas now 
Down now, here to Burke. Isaacson trying to isolate Owens. The Bears are doing a pretty good job keeping the Mustangs to the outside here on this overload. Put back now here to Owens, back to the point. One time blast from Thomas, had plenty of pace on that, but uh, caromed into the boards behind the net. And Kimlin saw it all the way though. Owens now. Thomas with another try, and that one was deflected, and Brucker is going to rejoin the fray as he steps back on the ice after serving his hooking penalty. Here's Owens, kept it just on side, and just to traverses the blue line on the right side of the offensive zone. Thomas now down to Vyasov. 52 seconds left on the five on four. Here's Burke, hit shot, and kicked aside there by Kimlin. Moving ever so smoothly post to post, as he always does, as is sent back now into Pine Murphy and he flicks it out now for the Mustangs to skate on to through Sean Jones with Flack the free goal man four goals on the weekend Flack sent it across looking for Anderson to the back door and uh, enough done by Ratcliffe to force him wide Anderson 26 seconds left now here on a five on four side of the net of the Mustangs dribble through back now here to Anderson got Claire in his way but McMahon and Flack here on the points for the Mustangs Anderson yet to utilize them still has the puck got McDowell now here on the near side McDowell just uh, back now here to Jones calls of shoot it now here for the Mustangs bench here's McMahon they're about to get Gautier back now from the penalty box and he is out uh, but he was off to the races McMahon was wiser to it and he sallied back into the neutral zone to cut off that lane here for Gautier Anderson gets shoved there by Guiné there's a little scrum developing there at the half hall. I'm sure that neither coach will be happy with uh, six players in one area of the ice. There's Jones. As the rest of his compatriots are heading to the bench on a line change, the Bears might take advantage of this. Sent across now here to Ratcliffe, just on side. Takes the check from McMahon, but not before he could get a touch pass through to Newmark, which is cut off. Good second effort there from Ratcliffe to get the puck back and get it back in deep here for the Bears. But... Uh, Comes back the eye here to the Mustangs. Annesley's back on the ice after taking that shot to the instep. Burke moves over the blue line, shoots, deflected shot, goes wide over the net of Anthony Kimlin. Sent across to the trailer, Owens. He's going to wind up and shoot. Oh, that was off the shin pad there of Funes. Some good shot blocking here from the Bears, at, uh, no matter what cost it seems. There's a hook there from uh, the Mustangs, unseen, but uh, seen by basically everyone on the Sydney Bears bench. That uh, puck shot out of the zone. And Thomas will gather it in now for the Mustangs. Goes back over the line, just on side. Not according to the officials. Vyasov just pulls up. Did well to evade Funes, but lost control of the puck temporarily. And cycles this one back in for Isaacson to skate onto with Newmark right on his hammer. Isaacson now prodded at by Annesley. Isaacson, well done there from Annesley to force the turnover. It's lofted out of the zone. Glove down here by Gautier. He's got a breakaway. Gautier v Pine Murphy. Gautier moves and shoots. Great save, Pine Murphy. And Gautier almost had another spectacular breakaway goal. Here's Thomas now. Just pulls up. Mustangs turn to counter-attack as Thomas takes the hit to make the play. Moved in now by Vyasov. He lost handle on it. But the play's still alive now here for the Mustangs through Humphreys. McMahon going to pinch in and put it back in deep for Humphreys. His uh, compatriot there on the other side of the ice rides the check there of Guillaume. It comes back to the point. That shot from Bright was off target. Stringer. And ends up now here with GNA for the Bears as he's paid close attention to close attention to by Mitch Humphreys. Bright gets the puck back now here to Humphreys. Nice pass. Humphreys with a shot. Good save from Kimwin. Well out to challenge on the angle and a little bit of push and shove as McDowell and Claire have a little bit of a face wash contest and that'll be it. Good setup by Stringer on Humphreys. So actually right to Stringer to Humphreys. Great, great little play. Corey Harris, AHL game day, watching my first AHL game from North Carolina, USA. These are two great teams. Well, Corey, that's correct. Just uh, remember Mustangs forever. <laughs> no bias. <laughs> no. So, as that shot uh, moved wide, looks like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Adrian Esposito has uh, he's taken his um, playing kit off and he's standing on the bench there. So I wonder if he's uh, injured and can't continue to play on the Bears bench, so... Stan Scott, that power play was a great penalty kill. Well, that's right, Stan. I mean, at the end of the day, you had a five on three for a minute, and it, and it didn't really uh, come to fruition. And you really can't throw those opportunities away when you're down a goal. 
There's Annesley now. Hear those delayed flights in Perth causing a bit of trouble. He's uh, sent back now here to the neutral zone. Jones. Over now here to Michael McMahon. And Bright now stats out down the near side. 12.50 remaining here in a spectacular game of hockey so far. Particularly that opening stanza. The second period had plenty of action as well. And there's still 12.40 of regulation here. We could be facing overtime. It would, it would be a pretty safe bet given the way this game's going. Here's Brucker now. However, we could be easily settled in regulation. Across to Annesley. As Stephen can have win the foot race there as uh, Jones had to peel off and head to the bench on the line change. Funes has the puck now for the Bears. Annesley will marshal the breakout now here for the Sydney Bears. And elects to go down the far side here to Gautier. Joe Owens beats Gautier to the puck just after he lost a little bit of control there on the pass. And Thomas sends it back now here to his defensive line mate there in Owens and his shot loved in by Kimlin and we'll get a face off so 11.54 left Kimo have all the phone calls being made so Stephen White 83 can look dapper in the booth well we're working on that okay. sorry Timo uh, <laughs> good. I thought that's coming straight out of my uh, was it uh, what is it called? Manscaping, but no. <laughs> Worked on the beard, mate, but uh, not there, not upstairs. Anyway, 11.40 to go. Grandy was supposed to bring the beanie last night, and he didn't, so I'm putting that one on him. Here's uh, Vyasov now. Man Thomas. Uh, sorry, Man Thomas. <laughs> Parker Thomas. No, he's got me in the wrong frame of mind now. Here's Vyasov. Vyasov now. Quality troll team. I'll give it to you. 10 out of 10. Turn up now here to Thomas, and he's going to have to skate back and get this one here for the Mustangs. 11.15 to go, 5-4 to four, the scoreline. If you just tuned in, you've missed uh, two-thirds of an incredibly entertaining game of hockey. Thomas took the check there from Newmark and enough to separate him from the puck. Here's the shot from Humphreys. Good save by Kimlin. It's loose at the side of the net. They whack at it, and they can't get it out of skates or off the side of the net. Newmark now had to jam it off the side of the net as McMahon held the line there for the Mustangs. And Wardlaw goes to work for the Bears. Not over, though, now, as far as the Mustangs are, are, concern are concerned on this uh, attacking drive. Humphreys puts it into McDowell. And uh, Gautier now. Gautier has drawn the penalty. And that's going to be a trip against Mitch Humphreys, I would assume. Or Brendan McDowell, I think. No, it's Mitch Humphreys, it's the Mitch. offender. Yeah. And he is going to the penalty box, and the Bears going to the power play. Well... That's absolutely not what you wanted. Ari Tomac, AHL, great game, Stangs. Keep up the pressure. Let's get back in front and show the City Bears how we do things in Melbourne. Well, Ari, they've got to kill this penalty, and they've got to keep taking it to Kimlin. Yep. Very clear trip there from Mitch Humphreys. Gautier, who we feared they were going to lose for 12 minutes, and they went for two, and he's on the ice and looking very dangerous on this power play, but the Mustangs are looking even more dangerous shorthanded. Here's Isaacson now. Isaacson to the high slot. Isaacson still got the puck. Isaacson then sees finally cancelled out there by Dowder and uh, single-handedly took the Bears' power play on. And the Bears' power play now onside here through Gautier. Moved out now here to Dowder, the trailer. Looking there for Gautier at the point. Did well to just stay onside despite running out of room. Put now here to Ratcliffe, sends it across to Annesley and now on to Gautier. Back now to the point. Annesley shoots and a wrestling match of shots. It's over, they score! As Gautier and Thomas tangled in the corner, the shot went through. I didn't see who actually got that in the end or if it was tipped, but I think it would have been Dowder. And just like that, the Bears have a two-goal lead again. Well, it, it looked like um, the Mustangs had, had lost their structure a little bit and they were running around and they never really got control to get it out. And and unfortunately, Dowda got the puck and... So here it is, Dowda. Yeah, so Thomas and uh, Gautier were tangling there. Yeah. Thomas lost his lead, but uh, not sure if there was going to be a penalty on that play or not. Didn't seem uh, too 
uh, too controversial to elicit one anyway. The play was going on. Both players were tangled. Dowder had the spot. He scores, and the Bears have a two-goal lead. That's the story of that last shift. As Claire lays the check there on Jones coming into the zone. 9.29 to go here in period three. What do the Mustangs have in response? Uh, they might have something here from Flack. To oh, Jones oh, just oh, banned oh. on the shot. Almost another reply there from the Mustangs. And, well, that's going to be a penalty as Guillaume is going to earn himself... Uh, oh, come on. Might earn himself two minutes and two minutes. There's an Anderson... Uh, And so Guillaume has gone for four minutes potentially. Uh, looks like Damien Bright. No, he, I thought he was going to get one minute as well, but I don't know what for. But uh, Guillaume's at least got two there for the interference call. As uh, Bright has a few words there to the Sydney bench. Well, <laughs> you know, nine minutes left, six on four. That's Watch it. the play, okay? So there's Guillaume. Late hit, <laughs> and Brian Funes uh, giving his best little uh, troll there. But uh, there was uh, the hit, and then Anderson. Well, Anderson's going. So what happened there? So this might be an embellishment penalty. Let's have a look. Here's Jones. Yeah. So, so he gets hit. The, that's the boarding penalty, yeah? Okay, so... The play continues, whistle blown dead. Anderson went there looking for Guillaume. But surely Guillaume would get to. What did Anderson do? I'm not sure. Maybe he was. I mean, he went over there to have something a... that we weren't watching in front of the. Well, he went over and had a few words to Guillaume. Guillaume's obviously gone for that hit in the corner. But Anderson's. Uh... So the hit in the corner, you know, again, it's so interpretive. Was it a hit from behind? Like well, he actually was turned hit on. Hit from that. behind, late hit. Let's have a look. Anders, HL game day looks like a packed house today. What's the capacity in O'Brien Group Arena? Well, it well, wasn't, as, wasn't as busy. I mean, Friday night was, was, you know, you couldn't get in. Yeah. Capacity's always been a talking point in terms of what is the actual capacity. It can fit about, it can fit about I'd say, roughly two and a half, including the bar and standing room. So, yes, it's a. Uh, Always a debated topic here since this place opened, but it's uh, not not as full not as full as it was Friday night. Still pretty good crowd in. We also had uh, the Air Canada crew out on uh, Friday night. Here's Annesley now over the blue line. So Anderson's got a roughing call. Okay, that clears that up. So we've got a two and a ten for the Bears. That means Guillaume's out basically for the rest of the game, and. This one moved in now as uh, Isaacson puts this into the corner. And then we've got two minutes to Matt Anderson. So here's a poke oh! inside of the net. Burke, whoa, oh! great oh! vision there from Vadim Vyasov. And Burke nearly had a response. And uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting clarification on the penalties. Looks like we had two and two as that will be held on to by Anthony Kimlin. So I'm just puzzled as to where Anderson got the penalty. Like so to clarify, it was a late hit. Then Guillaume got the cross check. <laughs> and then Anderson got a roughing. Stan Scott, has anyone ever told you that you looked like Magnum? Ma Magnum, yeah. what, the ice cream? Or Tom Selleck? Tom <laughs> Selleck. <laughs> so Stan, you know what? You and I are going to have a chance to talk about that because I'm coming to Perth for a whole week from tomorrow morning, OK? So I'll be looking forward to catching up with you. <laughs> Magnum P.I. Uh, we're going to have to roll the theme out here one of these last two games of the season here. Right? Moved across now. As the Mustangs still have 55 seconds left on the man advantage. And then all players... Uh, well, what will be back to five on five. And then the coincidental minus will exit after the next stoppage in play. How about that? He's back to Humphreys Good now. Good explanation. Back to the point now. Here to McDowell. Shot. Good save and a blocker save right on the waffle board there for Anthony Kimlin. It's hacked out of the... The zone and Dowd is going to stay onto it. McDowell right on him. McDowell done a pretty good job to tie up Dowd despite having the step on him. Here's McMahon now down the far side. McMahon trying to get around the Bears defense. It's dumped in off the kick plate. Flack's going to pick it up off the other side, but uh, elected to leave that to the trailer. And that being Sean Jones. Now clear. Just does a good job to wipe off seconds off the power play now here for the Bears. And Dowd is going to skate onto it. And we're back to five-on-five five hockey. 
as Wardlaw is back on the ice after serving the two, the uh, late hit two, that is. Back now here to Humphreys. Pass Claire. And now Annesley. Annesley now chips this one off the ice, off the boards, I should say, up ice. Here's the Gannick. Gautier, but uh, he couldn't take the puck. Isaacson can. He turns the puck over now here to Wardlaw, and he's going to start a rush now here with Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe moving in, and uh, just a little too much for him to handle. And Isaacson did a good job on the back check there as he uh, turned the puck over in the neutral zone, atoning for that. And he's got the puck again. Isaacson down the near side. Isaacson tried to drag through. Fumes his wide angle shot. It's just under oh, Kimmer. Then it went in. It went in through his legs, eh? And Kimmer says he's got it in his blocker. Yeah, well, there, I think. And I'll go, no go, he's waved it off. You should see that again. It looked like it had gone in between his legs and actually rolled over. It was, it was underneath Kimlin, and uh, he had it quite uh, emphatically in his block. Let's have a look. Get the shot. Oh, oh that's boy, a close oh one. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Where's the camera angle on yeah, that? Yeah. Well, you've got connection. <laughs> You've got connections in Toronto, don't you, uh, Rod? It's, I do. it's the off-season. Sure. Surely they don't have much to do. <laughs> Moved across now here to Stephen with Brucker and Dowder on this line here for the Bears, but a wide-angle shot taken in the chest by Jaden Pine Murphy. Far out. So let's talk a little bit about these penalties, okay? Charlie Lee, HL game day from Argentina. We go Mustang to win. I'm a fan of Mustang to death. Well, Charlie. I'm going to come and visit you in Argentina. We'll talk about it. Okay? Argentina. Hey. Okay. That's, I think that's the first. I don't think we've had anyone from, from South, South America. America. Yeah. Now. Moved out now into the neutral zone. Here's Brucker. Well, Brian Funes might have, want to have a few words there. Him in Spanish. Back back now here to Doubter. Doubter now. Oh, he gets uh, his progress delayed there as Jones is smashed there. And we got a penalty. Yes, we do. Yeah. And it looks like we've got another late hit, Brucker. Well, in his 100th game, uh, spending a fair bit of time in the penalty box. I think that's the third time he's been in. Definitely the second. And uh, the, the call. The hit. Let's have a look. Late hit is the call. Here we go. Jones has cleared it. Oh, yeah. But, you know, again, like, look where he was facing. So I look at those sort of things and go, was that a hit from behind? Yeah. He was turned to the boards and a meter away. Bring hockey back. BHB crew tuned in from Arizona. AHL game day. Sydney Bears, Melbourne Mustangs. You know, so that's where I was going before that last tweet came up. It's very much interpretive. You know, yeah. you had, you had, um, uh, Jamie Burke. No, um, Goche gone yeah. for two and a ten on the boards, and he gets a, a late hit. Okay. Yeah. And he was definitely on the boards. And the player was turned. Well, I think. On second look at uh, both Jones, well, Jones it was he came from in from the side. I, I mean, I'd like to have another look at it, but uh, it was late nonetheless. But I think uh, the only thing that saved his bacon was that he was up against the boards. Maybe he wasn't far enough yeah. away. Well, yeah, if you're if you're uh, away from the boards, you're uh, in uh, in deep. Sure, and There's I mean, even down here in the corner, right? Kevin Mitchell, HL game day. Kimmer has the glove of the cods, guys. Yes, 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 I am biased. Sydney Bears fan, but can't take anything away from him. Well, you know, that's true, man. Fook, Fook, Forstel. Watching the beautiful game here from Argentina. Is this the most popular sport in Australia? Well, that depends who you ask, but for, no. For us, it is. <laughs> yeah, for us, it is, yes. <laughs> but uh, now you've got four codes of football and... Uh, few other sports just a few other sports in front of it let's not forget <laughs> cricket yeah right and swimming and tennis and surfing and mm. we'll be here all night anyway <laughs> but uh nonetheless thanks for tuning in must be, very, must be very early in the morning i'm assuming Buenos Aires, maybe somewhere else here's Vyasov. back now here to fumes and now here to jamie burke they just chipped this one back up ice, Burke. Well, the Bears staring down the barrel right now as it stands of a six-point weekend and just opening up a gap here on the Perth Thunder and the Mustangs. Thunder play the Ice Dogs later today over in the West in the second game of a doubleheader. The first they took out 7-3 last night as Burke uh, knocked over Tommy Steven there at centre ice. And Tommy Steven's uh, protesting to the referee. 
thought he was just trying to do a statue of God. <laughs> That's in Brazil. Sparkle Pants Clark, HL game day. That angle is like the only one I can see, and it definitely was called early. Wow. Assuming that's the goal call. Yeah. I was going to say, was it Christ the Redeemer, I think, is a statue of. Yeah, so I'm going to get someone to tweet, from, in, tweet in from, from Rio. South America. Well, well I don't go. know. Do not confuse Argentina and Brazil. That, uh, no, no, no. Particularly South in the America, sports the world, mate. Uh, <laughs> okay. Ooh, staying out of that one. Staying out of that one. As this one moved 27 seconds to go. McMahon now. Down the far side. Here's McDowell. Pulls up. Back now here to McMahon. McMahon, his shot deflected on the way through. Rebound spills out. And that one blazed away wide there by Brendan McDowell. Here's Anderson. Just pulls up at the half wall. Well, a little bit of indecision as to who was going to take that pass. Flax skates onto it. But the Bears are back to full strength now as Brucker steps back on the ice. He's in behind the Mustang defence. And a pass there from Dowder. Just a little bit too much pace on it. It passed fortuitously off the kick plate there for, Dow for Brucker. The pass may have had a little bit of too much steam, but uh, the rebound was uh, centimetre perfect there off the, the kick plate. And, oh, well, chance gone begging there for the Bears to ice the game. And uh, Anderson was offside, much to the protest there of Thomas Flack. Now, you know how we do these... Matthew Brill, <laughs> you're right, Stan Scott. Rod does look like Magnum. <laughs> P.I. Thanks, Matt. You're a champion. OK? <laughs> Well, you should have come down in person to say that, Matty, because it would be good. Simon Marshall, how much is the cost to get cameras in the goal? Oh, uh, <laughs> you're looking at least, well, nearly close to six figures. Anyway, this one moved. It'd be, it'd be high, high we, five we figures. You just need yeah. to get a good cameraman, that's yeah. all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, 3.20 to go. Or oh, you can just put your GoPro in the back there, mate. We'll just put your phone camera in the back. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. As that shot through traffic, maybe get one of those old Nokia 3310s. They'll take a few puck slap shots. Uh, and there's a debate over that, whether that was offside or not. As uh, looking, looking at the statistics here, Annesley has a 4.9 so far this evening. So Four assists on the evening. And... Uh, we're talking about uh, Flack on the other side of the equation. Dowd has had a pretty good game too, two goals. But we would expect that with a 10-goal game in total from both teams. There's a, another flip pass there from Gautier. A few of those tonight. This afternoon, rather. Here's Thomas. Getting all the time zones mixed up now with everyone tweeting in from everywhere. Here's Burke. One-touch pass from Annesley. The intention was there. He had... Ratcliffe now peeling off to go through the neutral zone, but uh, just couldn't connect with him. Here's Thomas, tried to slip that one through. Vyasov has it, and a bit of time and space. Isaacson, back to Vyasov. He shoots, and you can hear it thunder off the pads there of Anthony Kimlin, and the puck helped the rest of the way out, and that's going to be icing. Well, no, no well, icing. How could that not be icing? Wow, okay. Unless they're trying to say he could have skated on that. No. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, going to be interesting. But anyway, 2.23 to go. And we'll keep an eye on Jaden Pine-Murphy when he decides to head to the bench at the beck and call of Max Perrin. going to be pretty soon. Dada now has the puck. Rims the puck around now. Burke tries to keep it alive. Comes back out to centre. Jones off. Made a meal of it. And here comes Ratcliffe. Got too much attention there from Jones. He goes down. And now that's going to make things worse for the Mustangs as that's a pretty clear hook on... Jake Ratcliffe there, I think it was Anderson, the offender, and uh, that's going to snuff out, I, th I would say, the Mustangs. Slim hopes oh, of getting back Jones into the game. Today is big Sean Jones. Okay. Jones going to the box. Well, now because you're a, sort of like a Chesterfield coach. Okay? A Chesterfield coach? Chesterfield coach. Well, I don't know right? what that means, but I've never heard sitting that. Sitting on the couch, okay? Oh, right? you mean, oh, you mean armchair coach or oh, something like that, yeah. Where I come from, there's a big Chesterfield. Oh, okay. Yeah, Get yourself yeah. comfortable, have some pretzels and beer, and be a Chesterfield coach, okay? So okay. here we go. All right. Dude, are you going to pull the goalie? Why not? I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. Obviously, you got to, well, you'd have to win the draw. They didn't win that draw, but you get it in deep, you get JPM to the bench, and you have a go. Absolutely. 157, almost, almost to the second. It was 203, the penalty was called, so the Mustangs will spend the rest of the game shorthanded. Unless, of course, the Bears score, and well, that'll be 
guaranteed that'll be the game. Here's Ratcliffe. Pinned to the boards there. As the Mustangs just trying to force something out of his own. Annesley faked the shot, took it in the end. Good save by Murphy. Just saw it at the last second. Ratcliffe feathers it back now here to Annesley. The point, a one-time blast from Gauthier. Man, that had some absolute power behind it. The second chance is successful, and that would be the game. The Bears with a power play goal. It is 7-4, to four, and they'll skate away, you would think, with six points from Melbourne. I would think so, man, and he's absolutely the last guy that you want to give the puck to. And you can see that in the previous shot. Good save, rebound, gets it back again, and wham, oh, baby. That release from Danny Gauthier is just... Scary. Let's have a look at this again. Tries the first time. Kicked out. Comes re repeat of the play again. Boom. That, that was that was faster the second time with a slower with a slower wind up time or less of a wind up time. So the Sydney Bears are going to head out of Melbourne with six points to see if the Mustangs can get a late consolation one. And they're going to pull a bit further clear of the Perth Thunder. They'll at least be three points clear of them as they are now. Yeah, got the goal as now. Jaden Pine Murphy has headed to the bench. Six on five now for the last 56 seconds of this game. As uh, well, this roof pass now here to Wardlaw. Here's a chance to ice it. It's now eight to four. And the Bears adding a little postscript on this victory here this afternoon. So, you know, there'll be many people who'll be going 7-4, why would you pull a goalie? Yeah. Okay? And at the end of the day, well, you could say you're not going to win, you're down three goals, yeah. what's the point? But, you know, you've got nothing to lose, yeah. and in actual fact, people can learn from it too. They had to watch the middle, right? They didn't do that well, and that goal got scored, but really, yeah. might be doing it too. So Wardlaw, fourth goal of the season for him, and that's the eighth tonight. And uh, not often you see the Mustangs give up eight. They only did once more when it was against the CBR Brave. Uh, What's it, the 29th of May, I believe. The game before the uh, Adelaide, well, actually it was a week after the Adrenaline loss. The win, Anderson. That now hit a flag. Oh. His shot, and oh. that was wide. And Flack went looking for goal number four. He waited a bit too long for that. Here's bright shot, that's blocked up high. And that's going to be sent back out to center ice. So two more games. Obviously, the Bears and North Stars will play game number two. Obviously, the Brave winning in Canberra last night. We head to Newcastle. That game is uh, this afternoon at 4 p.m. Which will follow on in just a couple of moments. And that will do it here from the O'Brien Ice House. The Sydney Bears have taken this game 8-4 to four over the Mustangs. And they take the full six points from their Melbourne road trip. And uh, they gain a little breathing room, albeit temporarily, in the third spot on the AIHL ladder. Which is what they wanted. So if you're the Bears, you'd be very, very happy coming into Melbourne, yep. uh, into someone else's house, and taking, taking six points. If you're the Mustangs, you'd be pretty disappointed because they played Melbourne Ice well, and they certainly started the game well. And um, I think that they petered off a little bit in the second period, let the Bears come back into the game. And then one thing leads to another, and it just is very unfortunate. Like you said, the last time that they got beaten like this was against CBR Brave. And um, they, really, they really don't need this. They need the sweep, and they didn't get it. So the Mustangs, they'll head to Adelaide next weekend. Chance for some points there and to, to, get, yep. to get back into it. And uh, the Bears... They'll have the North Stars and then the Thunder next weekend. So uh, two very good games for them. But they uh, open up a little bit of a lead on the Perth Thunder, but we'll see what happens with the uh, other two results this afternoon. So in closing... In closing, okay. okay. In, in closing, I just want to say that I've thoroughly enjoyed my time uh, with my friend Stephen White, who uh, doesn't matter what I say, he compliments it. He's uh, the best of the best and truly a great guy. And I look forward to... Uh, to the next game. Usually you save this for the last game of the season, mate. <laughs> you know, no, 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 because I think you deserve a compliment, my friend. Oh, there heartwarming moment here on AIHL game day. It's <laughs> going to make going to make the blue for real or going to make uh, kiss cam or no, I'm just <laughs> don't tell my wife no. Uh, <laughs> that will do and it. And I like your Chicago Blackhawks too. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll tell Grandy. I'll tell Grandy. All right. We're going to we're going to grab this up before all hell breaks loose. Thanks for joining us here at AHL Game Day, where it was the Sydney Bears 8-4.
over the Melbourne Mustangs, and they take six points from the weekend. Well, on behalf of my co-commentator, Rod Johns, I'm Steve White. We'll see you here on the 4th of August with the Mustangs taking on the Sydney Ice Dogs when they come to town. We'll catch you then. See you, dude.